Here's how you read and construct a phase change diagram. So we have energy on the X axis, which basically is telling us that as we add more and more energy, we're moving more and more to the right. So this is the first quadrant thing if you're thinking about algebra. Temperature is not the same thing as energy and that goes up on the Y axis. And I'm gonna add these two terms we talked about in a previous video, MP for the melting point and BP for the boiling point. This is not to scale, but it is going to show you the general format or structure of a heating curve, which is another term for this diagram. So if we're going from low energy up to high energy, there'll be a point at which we're adding energy. And as we add energy, the temperature of the material is increasing. And that makes sense. Add more energy, the particles are moving more quickly. This occurs during the solid phase when it's still below the melting point. So let's pause and think about this. This line here, this vertical, this horizontal line represents temperature. If something has not yet reached the melting point and we've added energy, this line here represents a solid that is getting warmer and warmer internally, but you won't really notice any changes with your naked eye. It's like if you take a piece of ice from the freezer and put it on your counter, it's gonna warm up, but it's not gonna melt immediately. You won't see it melting until it reaches the melting point. Now, you're adding more and more energy, but there will be a point here where as you add more energy, you're not gonna get an increase in the temperature itself. It's gonna stay the same temperature because the energy that you're adding is being used to break the intermolecular forces that are holding it together as a solid. So over here, we talked about the fact that in a solid and a liquid, there are intermolecular forces that keep the particles kind of in a fixed position. But these forces start to break down as you add energy. That's the whole, that's what the energy is being used for. So as you add more energy, it's actually going into weakening and breaking some of those intermolecular forces. So as a substance changes from solid to liquid, it's not going to increase its temperature. It's going to stay at that melting point until all the solid is gone. We call this phase change fusion, which is usually abbreviated as just FUS. So that's the solid to liquid transition. There will be a point at which there is no more solid left and every bit of energy you add is now going into heating the liquid up. So we have this slope here, which indicates that there is an increase in temperature as we add more energy. So for this section here, we've added more energy. And as a result, the temperature is increasing once again until it reaches the boiling point. Now this phase here is the liquid phase. So during this time, you just have liquid that's getting warmer. So imagine you have some water in a pot on the stove and you turn the heat up. You're adding heat energy and the temperature is slowly rising, but it's not boiling yet. There will be a point though, that it does reach the boiling point, And then you've got this going on. You've got the liquid to gas transition, which we call vaporization or VAP for short. During this time, similar to how we had over here, the energy that you're adding, that you're continuously adding during that time is going into weakening the intermolecular forces between the liquid phase, between the particles in the liquid phase. So here we saw that there are still intermolecular forces between the liquid particles. But as you add more heat energy, those are getting weaker and weaker themselves as well. It's basically like starting to free up the molecules so they can really live their best life as free gas particles. Now, of course, as you add more and more energy, some, all of the liquid will eventually go away and the temperature will start to rise again. And when that happens, then you just got a gas that is getting warmer and warmer. So this phase over here is the gas phase. So the main takeaway is this, when you have a slope and you have a slope like this, this is a phase that is simply getting warmer, warming solid there. Here we have a warming liquid so the temperature is rising as you add more energy. And here we have a warming gas. But notice how in the in-between sections where there is no slope and it's flat, you have that transition from the phase before it into the phase after it. So as you add more energy, that energy is going into breaking the intermolecular forces so it can actually free up more and more and increase its energy. Here we have the same thing going on with the liquid to gas transition, we're breaking most of the remaining or all of the remaining intermolecular forces and now those particles are free to move around. So let's follow the journey of a mass of water molecules. We're cold and we're below the melting point right here. So we're a solid, we're ice, and the particles are locked into place. They wiggle and jiggle a little bit, but they start to wiggle and jiggle more as we add more and more heat energy. The temperature is rising, but we don't necessarily see any melting yet. The melting occurs or starts to occur when we reach the melting point here. And for water, we already know that that occurs at, we're at zero degrees Celsius. 
So now we're adding more and more heat energy, but our temperature is not increasing because we're simply using that energy to break the intermolecular forces that are keeping us so locked into place. Now, eventually all of the solid will melt and our temperature will rise again as we're just a bunch of liquid now. So we have a lot more freedom to move. We have more kinetic energy. But remember that there are still intermolecular forces between the particles in a liquid, and those have to be broken completely in order for us to turn into a gas. So they will reach a point which we have so much energy as the particles that we have to basically do something more than just break the intermolecular forces. So we're breaking the intermolecular forces, but during this time, some of our particles are starting to fly away. They've gotten enough energy where they're actually free to move around a lot more now, and they're turning into gases, moving all over the place. During this time here, we're adding more energy. Our temperature is not increasing because we still have some liquid to deal with. So we still have some intermolecular forces to break, but eventually all of those intermolecular forces will be broken. And that's when now we're a bunch of gas particles and we're getting faster and faster. And at that point, there's really not much else in terms of everyday substances. It just gets hotter and hotter as a gas and the particles start moving quicker and quicker and quicker and they have more kinetic energy. So when does that happen for water? We know it's zero degrees Celsius when the melting point, but for water that is 100 degrees Celsius for the boiling point. So think about the fact that when you're reading one of these diagrams, you can estimate where a substance is in terms of this phase change diagram or this heating curve based on the temperature. So if you were told that water is at 45 degrees Celsius, you know it's somewhere in this region and it makes sense that it's going to be a liquid. If you see that water is negative 20 degrees Celsius, that's below the melting point. So you know it's gonna be somewhere over here and that's gonna be a solid, which we would call ice. As a preview, you will begin to quantify these with an equation like Q equals MC delta T. I will just say this for now. You can only use Q equals MC delta T. Notice how this means change in temperature. That's what that triangle means. It's a delta, it means change in. So you can only use the equation Q equals MC delta T when there's a delta T, which is on the slopey parts. Because notice how there is a change in temperature during those times. So for this equation, Q means heat, M means mass, C is the specific heat capacity, which will depend on the substance and phase, and then delta T is the change in temperature. You can't use Q equals MC delta T when the phase is changing. So either the phase will be changing or the temperature will be changing, not both.